Can you imagine to live until you're 95 and this is the first time that you've ever had an opportunity to just to tell your story briefly and know it's going to be recorded. This was something that's very special to be back in Berlin. A lot of you guys have seen Germany from a whole different perspective 76 years ago. It's important that the next generation remembers your service and sacrifice. We will never let anyone forget. Didn't know what to expect going back to Germany after 75 years. And the Best Defense Foundation, they treat each of us like we're kings. Never in the history of human endeavor have so many old, so much to so few. And when the history of this time shall be written, let it be said, this was their finest hour. I served in the Eighth Air Force over Germany. People always ask, weren't you terrified to go out over the enemy territory with a bomber, knowing you might be shot down? No, we weren't terrified. I didn't even think about it. We just went out there, did what we had to do, just like we had to do on a farm. It was a different time. We had a duty to do, a calling, and we accepted it. If we hadn't done what we did, this might have been an entirely different world we're living in now. You are among the few remaining living representatives of the Allied forces whose efforts liberated Germany and Europe from the Nazis. You, dear Bill Casassa, Jack Myers, Robert Naum, Melvin Hurwitz, Guy Stern, and Paul Fairbrook. Risk your lives as a very young man to fight for freedom, for peace and democracy in Germany and in Europe. The age you are right now is how they were going across the water fighting for freedom. It's just great to be back in free Germany. Yeah, yeah. It had an immense impact on your life, what happened there. But that was the culmination of a lot of effort. We were able to uh, fight him and win battles, and in the end, won out. We fought 171 consecutive days of full engagement with the enemy. What makes people who have no connection to a stranger to go out and risk their lives, greatness, and I say heroism, because it is in the service as a symbol, if you will, for mankind. We were a generation of guys who just got out of the depression <laughs> and graduated into a war. And that made a difference, believe me, because for some guys, that was an improvement. And when you talk to kids about things nowadays, try to remind them of that, because there was nothing to look forward to. It was a gray area. It's impossible to describe not having any money and there being no money to have. Being in the building and the room where the, many of the high-ranking Nazis signed off on a plan which referred to as the, the final, final solution. solution of the Jewish question. It is a place where people came to have a talk accompanied by food. And then they had a lovely luncheon and went back into town. Cold-blooded, incredible action. As a German-Jewish-American soldier, I am proof that the final solution did not work. It is very commendable for those of you who have resisted the trend towards dictatorship in this country, but for somebody who was able to resist it during the dictatorship of Hitler, it meant that they cared more about their country than about their own lives, and that's a special quality 
of belief that I think we should really appreciate and I think for us to honor those who fought against Nazis, many of whom lost their lives. We went to the Olympic Stadium and we sat right in the same seats Adolf Hitler sat when he watched the Olympics perform. The moment that was overwhelming for me, they found a place in Harlem and they put a plaque up for my brother that was murdered during the Holocaust. I looked at the board a little bit more closely and I found every member of my family was also remembered by a plaque. This is special for you, your family. This is, all your brothers are here to remember so that we never forget. Thank you very much. I didn't know we were going to make this stop. What angel arranged this? As a master sergeant in the U.S. Army, you learn to be a tough bird. Yeah. This, <laughs> in the literal sense, strikes close to home. In the early morning of April 10th, 1945, my platoon attacked the city of Hanover, right by the corner of the fence line for this camp. Bill Kassasa and his unit liberated this camp in April 1945. We didn't know what we went by, but we suspected something horrible. Because although we saw nothing, the stench was so bad, so incredibly foul, that I'll never forget it. Beginning of 1945, there were about 70,000 prisoners in the whole complex of the Sachsenhausen concentration camp. They tried to establish, let's say, an ideal concentration camp, an ideal architecture of terror. We come halfway around the world to this sad place, but a place of remembrance. And you think about the terror and the destruction and the murder that happened here. It's heavy. I couldn't talk about it for 50 years. The wreath that we put on the fallen soldiers of the Wehrmacht, to me that was personally one of the highlights of my stay. Just the opportunity and the fact that I could talk German to a lot of people has given me a chance that I never thought I would have again. Keep in mind, you know, nobody won the war by themselves. It was a team effort. Point is, we tried, and we tried like hell. I'm glad we did it, and I think we did a pretty good job. Yeah, I'm proud. We, we did it. There is evil in our society. Perhaps we have a slight obligation to oppose it.